Hey guys, Chris Dick here. So today I'm going to show you how to install Hive on your Ubuntu virtual machine. Now you need to have Hadoop installed and functional uh, with a, the HDFS and MapReduce fully working. Uh, moving on from that, well, what is Hive? Uh, Hive is a product that was, that was developed by Facebook in 2010 as a data warehousing and analysis package. It was designed to replace some of the Java programming that was necessary to program MapReduce, and they layered on top of it a, um, an SQL interface called HiveQL which is pretty cool. Uh, it allows all of the MapReduce functions, pushing data into, uh, into your HDFS um, with a lot less trouble of uh, programming. So it's a lot easier to program SQL than it is Java sometimes. So one other cool feature that it has is uh, Hive Server 2 and Beeline. And these are two products that allow from uh, a command line tool and a JDBC driver that allows for connecting to your Hive data sources from outside of your virtual machine. So again, some really cool features. And as we develop this series, I'm going to be introducing some of those features uh, and show you how to use them. So let's get started with our installation of Hive. So as I mentioned, there's a few pr prerequisites. Make sure that you have your HDFS and MapReduce fully installed and functional. Uh, the next thing that we have to think about is the version of Java. Okay, now if you've been following along with my videos, I generally just install the the current version of Java, which is, I think at this point, uh, 11, which is in 2021. Um, and uh, the current version of Hive will only work with version eight of the Java runtime environment. So one of the great things about having uh, the most recent version of JRE is that it always creates this little shortcut file and I've just highlighted it here. If we go to that file and um, understand what we're doing here, the next step will be to uh, install JRE 8 and replace this. If I double click on it, you'll see it goes to 11. We want to repoint that to go to 8. So let's do a install here. Uh, we'll launch a Ubuntu or a PuTTY session here. Just make this a little bigger for us. So let's get started and install that here. Okay. So the next step we're going to do is um, we're going to make a copy of the uh, default Java 11 or um, the, the default Java link that was there before. We're going to change it to uh, default Java 11 just so we don't lose the link. We all, we all want to keep it there. The next thing we'll create a link and point it to the Java 8 environment. So let's copy that command. So it looks like we're finished with our download and update there of Java 8 and we've completed that. Let's just go over here and refresh this directory. And there we have it. So this is our 11, okay? And then this one is eight, it's going to eight now. That's exactly what we wanted to do. All right, so let's move a lead, move along here. Um, we will go and download the most recent version of Hive, which is version 3.1.2. We'll put that into the Hive, uh, the downloads slash Hive directory, and we'll go into here, and I'll show you where that's downloading. It's just downloading right there, and you can see it's sitting at that point. Okay, let's see where we are here. Good. All right, so, after that, we're going to extract the file because it downloaded a tar file, which is a uh, compressed file. So we're gonna move that into the USR local folder. And then we're going to create a Hive directory. So what this does is it takes this directory and changes the name to simply a generic Hive. So we'll paste that command in. 
All right, now the next thing we're going to do is add the environment variables that Hive likes to use. Namely, we have Hive underscore home and Hive configuration directory. We also make an update to the path so that Hive, uh, so that Ubuntu knows where Hive uh, sits. So if I type in Hive at the command line, it doesn't have to be inside the directory of Hive home bin. The other thing is we make an alteration to class path and uh, we just tell it where to find the Hive class uh, libraries. So we'll run this command and this is going to push all of this information directly into our big data sh file. So because we made some changes to the environment, we'll run a reboot here and we'll just get that up to date close some of these putty sessions here. Now that's going to take a little bit of time, so let's move on to the next step and I'll explain what we're going to do. We're going to set the ownership and permissions here. So at this point, we're going to be setting it to the owner of Ubuntu and the group of Ubuntu. If you have already created a Hadoop uh, director or a Hadoop group, um, you could put Hadoop here and it'll work pretty much just the same. Uh, you just have to remind yourself to change that parameter to Hadoop uh, each time we run this command. So I'm going to copy that and let's see how we're, if we're here now. It looks like we're, we're all good to go. Launch a putty session. Log in. Okay, and we're going to change the ownership of that Hive home directory. It's just so you know what I just did. I will go into Hive. You can see now that the Ubuntu uh, are, is equally group and owner. Okay, next step, change the permissions. We've done that now. That means everyone can play nice in the ballpark here. So. Uh, the next step, we'll, we'll um, look at some of the template files for configuration. So we'll go into the template file, uh, sorry, the configuration directory here. And uh, all of these files with the last, uh, the uh, extension of template are files that you can uh, reuse for various purposes. So in this case, what we're doing is we're making a copy of the Hive default XML file, and we're changing it to uh, Hive-site. The next one we'll change is the uh, Hive environment file, uh, and that's a shell file that uh, will become Hive and ENV-SH, and then we'll set the ownership again. So let's copy those, and we'll go into our shell here. If I refresh, you'll see these two files are now created. Okay, let's move on. The next thing we're going to do is make some changes to our Hive site XML. And in particular, we're just going to make a few uh, changes to some of their environment variables. For whatever reason, these environment variables were not working correctly at the time of, uh, of this version. So I've uh, made a few uh, updates to correct those problems. And we just put these properties at the beginning of the file. If you copy this command, it will do that for you. So I really like things being done for me. So we'll just run that. And if we run this nano command here, it'll open up the file and we can check to see how things went in. And if you see here, this was where we ended up. Let's just move that up a bit. So we had our configuration element start and these are the entries that we put in. Okay, so we'll just X out of that. All right, now the next thing we have to do is make some updates to our DFS. The the DFS in particular has to have two, um, two directories um, available to it when we're running Hive. It needs a TMP directory and user Hive warehouse directory. So we're going to start our DFS by doing start dash DFS. Now it doesn't take too much time to get that up and running. 
um, but I will want to test that it actually works. So once I've uh, once I've got it up, um, I'll go to the web UI and we'll just be sure. Let's see, right there. Double check. Looks like we're up and running. We have one live node, so great, no errors. We're all good to go. <clears throat> okay, go back here. Now these ones, these commands here are going to run some um, commands into or create those directories that I was talking about earlier on the HDFS. And as we go here, we'll just put in that last directory. Now, there are a few weird warnings uh, with the Hive environment. And most of them are something to do with a conflict of libraries. And that is because uh, Hadoop has uh, libraries that are more recent than Hive. Uh, in particular, we have an S, uh, let's see it, uh, the SLF4J files, that's for your log file uh, creation. And um, there's a couple of solutions there. One is to point to the, uh, the Hadoop environment so that it always uses the Hadoop user class, class, class path first. That's a tongue twister. Um, and uh, we just update the file so that it just tells it where to look first. Or the workaround that is most commonly suggested is just ignore the, um, the file that's currently in the Hive lib directory. And you'll see there's one that looks something like this. It'll usually start with log4j and you're just going to ignore that file. So if you run this command, it will do that for you. And just to show you what it did there, so you're familiar, go right here and you will see if I go to log4j this is what it did there it just simply ignored the, the file it doesn't delete it it just ignores it all right now the next library conflict is guava and um, we do the same thing where we ignore the file okay but we also in this case we copy guava from Hadoop over to the Hive lib folder. So let's go ahead and do that. Run these commands. And you're going to see if I refresh here, if I look for G, we've got Guava 19 and we have Guava 27. So it's a big difference in version numbers there. All right, next. Now we have one other very weird problem in the Hive site template um, and is just a odd character that seems to uh, upset the compiler as it's running. So we'll just correct that as we are doing it right now. So we run that little command. It just simply searches for this set of characters and replaces it with a space, okay? Okay, now the next thing we're, we're, we're going to do here is actually, f this would be like formatting a drive or setting up or initializing the database. We're gonna initialize a da database type of Derby. That's the Hive uh, database default. So we're going to copy this command, paste it, run it, and you're gonna see it's gonna sort of spit out a bunch of empty lines in a moment. Okay, and if all goes well, we'll have a uh, source that's completed and initialized. You will also see, if we go back over to the home folder, if we refresh this, we have a metastore underscore DB. That is the, uh, the Derby metastore. That's essentially where all the database is stored for your, uh, your installation here. Okay, so that's great. Next step is we are pretty much ready to launch Hive. So let's give this a try. We'll launch Hive, click the type in Hive and it should load up without any trouble. We'll just wait for that to happen. 
And um, once we're up and running, we'll run a couple initialization commands just to be sure that we've actually got it set up. So this sometimes takes a little bit of time, but be patient. So first thing I'm going to do is show databases. And if we have some databases, we have OK, which means the command went OK. And we have the database called default. So naturally, as I start to use this, I can actually integrate um, some information into default. Um, I, I can use that as my default database. And I, I can also create my own database, another database on top of that. So it looks like we have everything up and running and working here. The next video I'm going to be doing is it will be showing you some of the features of using Hive. So I hope you'll watch. Thanks again for watching, guys. Enjoy. Uh, remember to like and share and catch me in the next one. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.